welcome back here at the International Wealth Builders Association radio talk show. And I am your host, Marie Antoinette Waite. Um, I am the uh, founder and CEO of Finest Women in Real Estate and also Fire Up Connect. And I hope that you check it out, fireupconnect.com. Uh, we meet every uh, week and we uh, try to collaborate with all, all types of businesses. Uh, today, uh, again, we had Patrick Kappel, who is an amazing real estate broker in San Diego, and he already shared so much information that I can't wait to hear more from him. So Patrick, um, you were talking about all the upcoming developments in San Diego, and um, are there more that you wanted to share aside from what you just shared last, in our last segment? You know, I always kind of sum it up by this, uh, a phrase that I've been saying for years now is San Diego today is San Francisco circa 1990s. And what I mean by that is San Francisco really blew up in the 1990s and early 2000s because the silicon chip and the powers to be decided the silicon chip was going to be created and the tech center was going to be in San Francisco. And I got the name Silicon Valley just from that silicon chip growing there. And you didn't need to be a founder of a tech company or an employee of a tech company to make millions of dollars in Silicon Valley. All you had to be is an average Joe that just bought real estate in Silicon Valley in the 1990s. We just helped a client uh, sell a property in Silicon Valley. They bought it for around $800,000 and they sold it years later for $5 million. I mean, that individual made over $4 million, not even working in tech, just owning real estate in Silicon Valley. Now, it's not the 1990s anymore. You can't go back and do that, but you can do it today in San Diego because San Diego's biotech growth and biotech today is what the silicon chip was in the 90s. Biotech is really our next innovation. It's our biggest growth sector in the United States amongst tech and biotech is centered here in the San Diego hub. So that's why I'm not in biotech, but I follow the biotech market because I know it's going to have a direct reflection and correlation to what happens to real estate prices in our backyard. Let me ask you this question. What, where are the investors coming from? Are they local or are mm -hmm. they coming international also for you? Both. Yes. And yes. So there's a lot of local investors in San Diego. Um, we also have a huge flood of people moving into San Diego from around the United States. A lot of folks from Los Angeles and San Francisco are moving here because we're so much cheaper than those two areas. Yet we have a lot of people from the Midwest and the East Coast moving into San Diego. You hear what I would call a lie quite often. And that lie is that everyone's leaving California. Everyone's leaving San Diego. That's not true. People who can't afford San Diego and people who can't afford California are moving out. But people who can afford it, all these highly paid, highly compensated tech folks are moving into San Diego and into California. Um, so a lot of people move to Texas from California, but more people move from Texas to California than any other state. So we're gaining a lot of Texans, we're gaining a lot of Midwest, we're gaining a lot of people from the East Coast. And yes, as you alluded to, international investors, they've always liked the big cities, they always like the coastal cities. So along with California, they typically like cities in Florida, New York, and those high value cities that also have high growth. Okay, and how do you feel about um, some of the uh, changes in the uh, city ordinances, you know, the regulations in regards to owning real estate properties, because I've heard some negative stories that, you know, it's getting tighter, it's harder for you to own real estate investment properties, mm -hmm. uh, because of the way they're running the, uh, the city. Yeah, it doesn't bother me too much. I am, I believe more in economics than politics. So I always believe you should let supply and demand determine what pricing should be not a political decision. Um, that said, a lot of the well-intended political decisions that uh, politicians make, such as rent control, um, that actually hurts, especially those at the bottom end of the socioeconomic run, because it de-incentivizes folks to develop. I'll give you another example. At lunch today, I was sitting with a bunch of investors and they would say, yeah, you know, when I used to have you know uh, a, a nice tenant that never raised a rent or a good tenant never, or just raise it minimally but now investors are raising rent as much as possible why is that because of rent control and they don't want to get behind on their rent raises 
because a government will now control how much you can raise it per year. So unfortunately, my concern is a lot of politicians do not have economic backgrounds. A lot of them do not have financial backgrounds. And um, a lot of their goal is usually to keep their job. So they will make decisions based on what their constituents want rather than what's best for their constituents. And most constituents don't have degrees in economics. And they don't understand, um, unfortunately. And they just look at what's happening today, what's happening tomorrow, rather than what's going to happen in the next 10 years. Wow. Uh, I'm thinking that they should be listening to this radio show. Well, like, so I mean, I wish I sat... <laughs> I wish I sat on the Federal Reserve Board because the Fed has raised interest rates. And I think they should. We need to like we need to squash inflation. But the reason mortgage rates have gone up so much isn't just because they raised interest rates. It's also because they stopped buying mortgage backed securities. And because of that, um, there's less buyers of mortgages, uh, less demand, which means the price, the what we got to pay for a mortgage now has gone way up as a consumer. Because they stopped buying mortgage-backed securities, developers have stopped building and sellers, homeowners will not sell because they might not love their house, but they love their mortgage. If the Fed were to raise rates, but keep on buying mortgage-backed securities, that would keep interest rates lower. Not low, but lower for mortgages. And that would help us build more homes and loosen up inventory. Um, but I think our housing crisis is going to become worse because of the bump we've seen in interest rates, which in the long term is going to make homes more valuable. This short term rise in interest rates, believe it or not, is going to make homes more valuable because we're just not adding supply now. You have any interest in getting into politics? Maybe you can help us. <laughs> I know. I think I honestly, maybe someday, but um, I all the mudslinging and all the name calling and whatnot, like, like I said, number one rule of life, be a nice person. And um, I just think there's people that are not nice, <laughs> to put it bluntly in politics. Yeah. Maybe I'll get into it someday. I'd be one of those nice politicians, I would hope, um, and just bring some level of economics to it. Because here's the weird thing. I'm not going to tell you how I vote. But when I say, hey, rent control is a well-intended law, I get it. I know why they want rent control. Marie, when I was a kid, we lost our house. Like, we moved in with my grandparents. I know what housing insecurity feels like. Yeah. Um, I, I started at the bottom. I know what it likes to what it's like to be there, but I think we need to help everyone at the bottom by making regulations that don't make them feel good today, but rather make them be in a good position tomorrow. And rent control does not create the housing that people need. Ooh, that is a lot of good information, Patrick. Yeah, I went on a tangent there with politics almost. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, um, this show is about international wealth builders, and I'm hoping that, um, you know, with your, the information you gave us, it's going to trigger a lot of good, you know, ideas for people to really start looking into their, you know, to their wealth, um, how they can really build their wealth and having the right resources, having you. Uh, accessing you with your in, uh, economic information. I mean, how would you be able to um, advise someone uh, that is just starting out? And what will be the best uh, process for them to um, to take on a real estate, you know, investment or any kind of uh, buying homes? Yeah, like I, I just did a meeting last night with someone. So usually what happens is a client's like, hey, Patrick, your team knows what they're doing. You're smart. Can you help me buy real estate, get in this investment game? Um, even if it's just buying their first home or a condo or buying a multifamily. And usually they'll reach out to me by email, um, phone. I, I'm easy to find. Patrick Kappel, just put my name in Google. And uh, we set up a meeting. We do a meeting like this, Zoom, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, sometimes I'll have a team member who's going to assist uh, in the Zoom meeting with us. And it's a one to two hour meeting to kind of learn about that person, what their goals are and how we can help them get there. They don't pay us. Uh, we work in brokerage. So if someone doesn't buy or sell something, we don't get paid. We get paid based on commission at the close of a transaction. So we give away a lot of free advice. And typically, though, by the end of that one or two hour meeting, somebody says, yeah, I want you guys to be my realtor for life. 
and we help that person become wealthy. And I look at that as a not a transactional relationship, but a lifetime relationship. My goal is not to help someone buy a house and then walk away. My goal is to help them buy a property and then a year or two later, buy another, a year or two later, buy another, give them advice on, hey, you should do this cash out refi or that tax deduction, which is give them a whole well-rounded advice. We're not your CPA, we're not your financial advisor, but you're we're your realtor that gives you a little bit of guidance on both sides there. Okay. So, um, you know, what would be the, the lowest uh, down payment that you can have even to start with? Zero. Zero? So, um, yeah, if you're a military vet like me, you can use a VA loan and do 0% down. But now here's a cool thing. Even if you have, even if you're not a military vet, we can get you 0% down. How is that? California has a $90 billion surplus, $90 billion surplus. They have dedicated $1 billion per year for the next 10 years to go to home buyers. So my team is running it like a champion right now on these grant programs and we're helping home buyers get their down payment covered by the state of California. So we just helped this young girl buy her first condo. And uh, we got California to write her a check for 10% of the purchase price. And that covered her 10% down payment. Wow, that is incredible. But they do need to have a, a stable job in order to- Got to have a job. Yeah. Got okay. People always ask me, hey, what's the best way to get in real estate investment? And they'll say, should I door knock? Should I cold call? Should I do all these like crazy things? I'll say, no, just get a job. Get a W-2 job, show some income, now you can get a loan. Because the number one thing you need access to is money. And the best money you can get is not some creative financing or some hard money loan. The best and the cheapest money you can get is just a traditional 30-year loan from a lender. It's the best wow. money you can get. Okay. And you and need a, a job. Lot of, a lot of people are kind of sitting at home, you know, <laughs> and I think, you know, we need to start getting people uh, to start, you know, looking for jobs and you know, be able to uh, afford and have their own real estate property. Okay, so we're going to take our last break, Patrick, and mm -hmm. uh, I would like to get more uh, overall perspective from you on our last, on our next segment. So, yep. um, okay, this is the International Wealth Builders Association radio talk show. I am your host, Marie Antoinette Wait, Stay with us, and we have one more segment with Patrick, and we'll see you then. <music> 